Recently, I found the time to play through the three main Danganronpa games, Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair, and Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. So today, I want to work out which game is the best in the series by putting all three games up against each other in a variety of categories. I won't be talking about Ultra Despair Girls today, because I haven't had the chance to play it yet, and I also won't talk about Danganronpa S as, well, let's just say that it definitely is not the best Danganronpa game in the series. Now, let's all rise for the trial. Story. With the Danganronpa games being visual novels, the story is an essential part of these games. In these games, you attend an elite high school with students who are all an ultimate of something. For example, you will come across the ultimate detective, the ultimate inventor, and even the ultimate gamer. However, things quickly get thrown into disarray as Monokuma the bear shows up and forces you to participate in his high school killing game. Monokuma does this by trapping you and your classmates within the school, so you can't reach the outside world and by giving out motives to make someone commit a murder. When a killing does take place, the murderer becomes the blackened. Once enough of the classmates have discovered the dead body of the victim, a class trial will take place. Within this trial, your job is to figure out who the blackened is. If you can't discover the blackened, everyone dies except the blackened, but if you can discover them, only the blackened will get executed and the high school killing game continues. The killing game ends when only two students remain. That's the general gist of the story story in all three games. But this is Danganronpa. There are several shocking plot twists and so many instances where these games are able to subvert your expectations. So which game is the best story in the series? Well, Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc story introduces you to the crazy world of Danganronpa. It surprises you with its unexpected plot twists and sets the tone for what to expect from the rest of the Danganronpa games. Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair is set in a slightly different location this time. Instead of being at a high school, you are on a school trip to Jabberwock Island. You then get trapped on the island and have to participate in Monokuma's killing school trip. The story though still manages to play off your expectations from the first game to shock you even more with the many curveballs and plot twists. Goodbye Despair basically looks at how Trigger Happy Havoc went up to 11, starts from that intensity and never really falters. It's carnage from start to finish and I love it. Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony has the almost impossible job of trying to top the previous games. In V3, you are back in a high school for another high school killing game. Players know what to expect from the series at this point, yet this story still needs to subvert players' expectations. So does V3's story manage to do this? Well, somehow, yes. My expectations were already being blown out of the water from the first chapter alone, and this continues up until the very end of the story. I will say though, that V3's ending is not everyone's favourite. I guess you could say that the final big twist was a bit controversial, with not every player liking it. Personally though, I still liked the ending and you can see what it was going for, but it's not my favourite ending in the series. I really enjoyed all three stories from across these games, but as for my favourite one, I'm going to give it to Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. For me, Goodbye Despair has the best fleshed out story overall, and it's a wild ride from start to finish. It also has my favourite ending out of the three games, so I'm awarding Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair with the best story. Characters. I would say this is easily the toughest category to decide a winner for, as there is such a wide range of diverse characters from across the series, and everyone's favourite and least favourite characters across the series are probably all different. All the games have a strong cast of diverse and likeable characters, and it's these characters which make these games so fun to play. So how am I going to decide which game has the best characters? Well, talking about every single character in depth would take way too long, and I think that would deserve its own video at some point. So for this video, I'm going to highlight some of the favourite and not so favourite characters from all three games games, while also sprinkling in some of my own opinions for good measure. From the cast of characters in Trigger Happy Havoc, Junko, the ultimate fashionist, and Kyoto, the ultimate are considered to be favourites of the series, and Chihiro, the ultimate programmer, is a personal favourite of mine. Now Trigger Happy Havoc does have one character in particular that I don't think anyone really likes to be honest, and that's the Reddit guy. From Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair, Gundam, the ultimate breeder, is a highlight for me with his cute hamsters, Chiaki, the ultimate gamer, is another favourite of the series, and a personal favourite of mine too. And who can forget the absolute mad lad Nagito, the ultimate lucky student. Love him or 
hate him, he is certainly something, and I love him. As for the characters that aren't so great within Goodbye Despair, there is Teru Teru, the ultimate cook, who is basically just a big pervert, and Hiyoko, the ultimate traditional dancer, who is just very selfish and she's an absolute asshole to everyone. Moving on to Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, Maki Roll, the ultimate child caretaker, and Kakichi, the ultimate supreme leader, are both favourite characters from this game, and Miyu, the ultimate inventor, and Kibo, the ultimate robot, are also both personal favourites of mine. Now there aren't any characters I dislike within V3, but there is one character I found to be a little too annoying, and that character is Angie, the ultimate artist, because she's a brainwashed freak who keeps wanging on about this Atua god. Okay, maybe that was a bit harsh. She's nowhere near as bad as the Reddit guy. So now that I've gone through some of the best and worst characters from each game, it's time to pick a winner for this category. It was very tough to decide a winner, but in the end, I chose the winner to be Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Goodbye Despair may have some characters I dislike within it, but it has way more characters that I enjoy over the other games. I have failed to yet mention some of my other favourite characters from the series that came from this game, like Kazuichi, Ibuki, and Fat Byakua. So Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair, wins again, taking home the award for best characters. Gameplay. The class trials are where the meat of the gameplay lies within Danganronpa. The trials are where you'll be putting on your detective hat and working out who is the blackened. You do this by seeing through your classmates' statements, playing some mini games which vary in quality, and by presenting a lot of evidence. Before talking about the trials as a whole, I want to talk about them from a gameplay perspective, mainly focusing on the mini games that appear within the trials. I'll talk more about the trials and which ones are the best and worst later in this video, so keep watching for that. Right, let's talk about these mini games within the trials, shall we? Within the Danganronpa games, you spend most of your time within trials taking part in non stop debate phases. These debates are where you will be shooting truth bullets through other students' weak points within their statements. These weak points are areas within a student's statement that could potentially be contradicted by your own evidence. The truth bullets are pieces of evidence you use to shoot through students' weak points to contradict their statements. Non-stop debate did get improved within Goodbye Despair and V3 Killing Harmony. In Goodbye Despair, you now have the option to agree with classmates by shooting your truth bullets at blue weak spots, and in V3 Killing Harmony, you have the option to straight up lie. This is a great new addition as lying can sometimes take you down one of the trial's many back routes. Back routes are alternative routes you can take in trials by using specific lies in certain debates, where you're canonically supposed to just tell the truth. The alternative events always reconverge with the canon stream of events pretty quickly, so they don't affect what happens within the trial that much, but most of the back routes lead to some pretty funny events, and it's really satisfying being able to pull off a lie within a class trial. The other part of the trials that appear within all three Danganronpa games is the closing argument. This is where you piece together the event of the murder into a manga style comic. Once the comic is complete, an animated version of the comic plays out, explaining how the murder was committed, which concludes the trial. These are my favourite parts of the trials. It's really satisfying to piece together this comic using all the evidence and your own knowledge gained from the trial to conclude who the murderer is, and you will have no idea who it is at the start of the trial, so the comic really helps to sum everything up. Each Danganronpa game also features its own set of exclusive minigames you can encounter during trials. Within Trigger Happy Havoc, there are two of these. The first is Hangman's Gambit. You shoot letters to spell out a word corresponding to a piece of evidence, and that's kind of a. It's basically just playing a game of Hangman. It's not great, but it at least does break up the action from the main non-stop debates. The other minigame though is Bullet Time Battle, a rhythm-based minigame that is rad as flip. These usually occur towards the end of a trial and tend to be one of the final tipping points proving a student is guilty. How do you prove they are guilty? Well, by shooting bullets at the opponent's weak spots while also staying on rhythm. Easily my favourite minigame within Trigger Happy Havoc. Goodbye Despair features four new minigames that you'll come across within trials. The first is Improved Hangman's Gambit, which I would argue and say is just more tedious and frustrating than Hangman's Gambit from the first game. The letters now have to be entered in the correct order instead of just any order, and if two letters on screen collide, you will take damage. It's a pain, and I don't like it. Panic Talk Action is essentially this game's version of Bullet Time Battle from the first Danganronpa. Rebuttal Showdown is a brand new minigame where you'll be slashing through your opponent's weak spots with a blade, until you find a weak spot you can shoot with a truth bullet. This is my favourite minigame to come across within Goodbye Despair. And finally, there's Logic Dive, which can only be described as a snowboard slope of the mind. You steer your board and body into answers to logical questions as they fly up on the screen. Again, I really like this 
minigame too, and it helps to break up the pace a bit within trials. Now, V3 Killing Harmony has the most minigames you'll come across during its trials, with there being six of them. One of the new minigames is Mass Panic Debate. This is very similar to Non-Stop Debate, but this time all your classmates are shouting over each other, making it much more chaotic and more difficult to find the one weak spot to shoot your truth bullet at. Hangman's Gambit returns again, as Hangman's Gambit V3.0. Honestly, having this game included here again just feels more like a joke at this point. There's Argument Armament, which is basically this game's rhythm minigame. Debate Scrum is quite interesting. You play this minigame when your classmates are split between two opinions, and your job is to convince the opposing side to agree with your side. You do this by listening to the remarks made by characters from the other side, and then by matching them up with counter remarks made by classmates on your side. Mind Mind makes you chip away at blocks on the screen to uncover hidden images. And finally, there's Psychic Taxi, which has you driving down long stretches of road to collect letters forming questions for you to then answer. It's kind of like this game's version of Logic Dive, and I prefer it to Logic Dive too. The amount of mini games and their variety here help to keep trials interesting and the pace of them flowing well. That is why I'm going to say that V3 Killing Harmony has the best gameplay within the series. All of the mini games, apart from Hangman's Gambit, feel great to play. On top of the great new addition of being able to lie within non-stop debate, V3 Killing Harmony wins the award for best gameplay. This is editing Ollie here. I realised that I forgot to mention that Rebuttal Showdown also returns within V3 Killing Harmony. And I forgot because I'm a big bozo. Trials. Now it's time to talk about the actual trials themselves. Which trials were the most exciting to participate in? Which trials flowed the best? Which trials had the most satisfying outcomes? Stuff like that. Again, like with the characters, I'm not going to talk about every single trial in detail across all the games, since that would take some time, and that probably deserves its own video too. But I will discuss each of the trials and highlight my favourite and least favourite trials from across the series. Make sure to subscribe though, so you don't miss future videos going more in depth on all the Danganronpa characters and trials. Oh, and just a heads up, there will be spoilers here, so if you want to avoid them, skip to this timestamp now. Ready? The first game has a pretty solid set of trials, and they lay a good foundation for what to expect from the rest of the series. There are six trials in total. The first five will have you figuring out who committed a murder, while the last one serves as sort of a final act towards the whole story the game slowly builds up to. Goodbye Despair and V3 Killing Harmony also follow this same structure, with in their trials too. Back to Trigger Happy Havoc, the first trial's job is to essentially teach you how class trials will work, and it does a pretty good job at doing this. The second trial is the series' first example of major misdirection. You were probably convinced that Byakua was the blackened like I was, but nope, it wasn't him. And Chiro's gender reveal within this trial was also pretty cool. The third trial is kind of meh. It's the first double killing, and none of the double death trials across the series are that good to be honest. But its redeeming factor is that the Reddit guy dies. Yay! Trial 4 is my favourite from this game, with it featuring the first suicidal death within the series. Trial 5 essentially serves as a big build up to the final act, Trial 6, and Trial 6 has you figuring out how you ended up in the high school killing game in the first place, and who is behind it. In Goodbye Despair, the trials get even wilder than the first game featuring more twists, more unpredictable outcomes, and more very satisfying conclusions, making trying to solve these trials more fun. Trial 1 again serves as as an introductory case, so this case will hold your hand a bit, but it also doesn't give you the answer right away. There are some big surprises within this trial, and it's a very enjoyable first trial. Trial 2 is also pretty solid, with there being lots of time spent on character development for Fiyuiko and Peko. Trial 3 though, is absolutely awful. I would say this is easily the most disappointing trial within the series. It's a double murder, and it's pretty obvious from the start of the trial that Mikan is the number one suspect, and guess what? She was the blackened! Whoa! McCann's reasoning for committing both the murders isn't very satisfying either, and this trial quickly just becomes more of a chore to do than a fun trial. Thankfully, things pick back up again with Trial 4. Taking place in a trippy funhouse, this murder requires a lot of in-depth thinking to solve it, and this is one of my favourite trials within the series. Trial 5 is another favourite, with it being all about Nagito, the mad lad 
and Trial 6 has you piecing together everything you know about Hope's Peak Academy, revealing the truth about Jabberwock Island, and attempting to end this school killing trip. V3's Killing Harmony trials, I would say, aren't as complicated as the ones in Goodbye Despair, but they are still pretty enjoyable. Trial 1 is easily the most enjoyable beginning case within the series. The Blackened being the protagonist character, Kaede, was a massive shock that I don't think anyone saw coming. Trial 2 was an okay case, but it wasn't that memorable. Trial 3 is another double killing, and I've already mentioned that all the double killing murder trials aren't that great. I will say though, that out of all the double murder trials, this is the best one. Trial 4, for me, is one of the saddest trials in the whole series. Having gone to be the blackened, and him not even remember that he committed the murder, was just so cruel. The trial was horrible, but in a good way. Trial 5 is quite a unique trial, since it was unknown at the start of the trial whether Kikichi or Kaito had died in the hydraulic press machine. Even Monokuma didn't have a clue who the victim of this case was. In the end though, this became a great trial as it creates a heart pulling and emotional experience. And Trial 6, the final trial within the whole Danganronpa series, is, well, controversial. Let me explain. It is revealed within this trial that within the game's first trial, Kaede didn't kill Rantaru, and it was actually to Smoogie, making this whole killing game unjust. It is later revealed by to Smoogie, who turns out to be the mastermind of this entire thing, that the whole Danganronpa universe is a reality show made of fiction. So everything that happened within the first two games and this game doesn't matter at all, because it's all just fiction. Everything about the Danganronpa world is a lie, and that pissed off a good chunk of people. To be told that everything is just fiction kind of makes everything building up to this point feel a bit pointless. And the outcomes of this trial make it seem like there isn't going to be another mainline game in the series. As to what I thought about this trial, well I still really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the many twists within this trial. It was a great trial to cap off the entire series with, if this is going to be the last mainline game. So I talked a little bit about each trial within each game, so now it's time to decide which game has the best trials overall. Again, I found this to be a pretty hard decision, but in the end, my pick is Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. From the way I see it, Trigger Happy Havoc had a great set of trials. Goodbye Despair takes inspiration from them and cranks it up to 11, and while V3 Killing Harmony gets even wilder with its trials, I think it takes a couple of steps back too. Most of the trials don't feel as complicated compared to the ones within Goodbye Despair, with the exception of Trial 3 within Goodbye Despair. I found myself scratching my head a lot more over who the Blackened could be within Goodbye Despair than I did within Killing Harmony. I also think that the trials in V3 don't reach as much of a satisfying outcome as the ones in Goodbye Despair did. Don't get me wrong, the trials in V3 are still really enjoyable, I just think Goodbye Despair did it a little bit better. So Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair, wins on having the best trials. Visuals, Danganronpa 3, there is no need to debate it. V3 Killing Harmony is the clear winner here. Why? Well compare the user interface from Killing Harmony to the previous games, and you can just tell it's a massive upgrade. And being able to see the protagonist's sprite during conversations with other characters is a really cool new addition. The environment within V3 is also much better when compared to the other two games. The environment in Trigger Happy Havoc when walking around the school feels quite bland, and although the environments in Goodbye Despair look pretty nice, they don't really convey the feeling of being trapped in a horrible killing game, since you are on a nice tropical beach island. So Danganronpa V3, Killing Harmony, easily wins best visuals. Soundtrack. My personal favourite category when I do one of these which is best videos. The soundtracks from all three Danganronpa games are great. They really help to set the tone and emphasise the current mood of what's happening within the game at the current time. There is a lot of music in each of these games soundtracks and each of the soundtracks have some absolute bangers in them. I'm going to highlight some of my favourite tracks from across the series before picking an overall winner for this category. From Trigger Happy Havoc soundtrack we have Beautiful Death. There's also argument Turn Up The Heat, which plays during heated non-stop debates, and it really pumps me up. And there's the certified banger, New World Order. Next up, from Goodbye Despair, we have the very upbeat Love is Survival. 
We also have Kill Command, which plays when investigating for evidence, and it sets the tone of the current situation really well. And there's Welcome to Dangan Island, the game's opening song, and it slaps. Moving on to V3 Killing Harmony, we have another beautiful song in the form of Beautiful Lie. There's Rise and Shine Earth Sign, which is the theme tune for the Monocubs, and I love this tune. We also have Psychic Taxi, which is the music from the Psychic Taxi minigame, and this song is a banger. And finally, we can't forget the new introduction Danganronpa song from V3. It slaps. Danganronpa. So those are my highlights from the soundtracks across all the games. As for which game has the best soundtrack overall, I think it's V3 Killing Harmony. Not only does this soundtrack have some absolute bangers in it, but it also has by far the largest collection of songs compared to the previous two games. This soundtrack also features songs from those previous two games as well, which is super cool to see. So Danganronpa V3's Killing Harmony wins the award for best soundtrack. Kind of fitting that V3 wins the music category since the word harmony is in its title. You know, music terminology. When a combination of simultaneously sounded musical notes produce a pleasing effect. Very cool. Yes, yes. Runtime. Our last category of the video. Runtime. I'm talking about how long it takes to complete one full playthrough, and how long it takes to 100% each game. Big up you completionists out there. According to HowLongToBeat.com, Trigger Happy Havoc takes on average 25 hours to beat the game, and 45 hours to 100%. This adds up, as it took me about 25 hours to beat the main story. Goodbye Despair takes on average 33 and a half hours to beat the game, and 66 and a half hours to 100%. It took me 35 hours to beat the main story, so a little bit longer than average. V3 Killing Harmony takes on average 39 hours to beat the game, and a whopping 97 and a half hours to 100%. This game takes a lot longer to 100% because it contains the most end game content of the three Danganronpa games. It took me 45 hours to beat the main story, so quite a bit longer than average. Which means Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony is our clear winner here for the runtime category. Alright, now we have gone through all the categories, it's time to crown our winner. The winner of the best story, characters and trials is Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. But the winner of the best visuals, soundtrack and runtime categories and our overall winner to be declared the best game in the series is Danganronpa 3 Killing Harmony. No, it's wrong. Okay, so I know that V3 Killing Harmony came out on top for most of the category awards, but I don't think it should be crowned as the best game in the series. Instead, I want to crown Goodbye Despair as the best game in the series. Although Goodbye Despair won fewer awards, I think it won the most important awards. The Danganronpa games are visual novel murder mystery games, with some action and adventure elements thrown into the mix. The main reason why people play the Danganronpa games is for the story, since these are visual novel games. And because of that, the categories Goodbye Despair 1 are more important than the ones V3 Killing Harmony 1. Characters are important because you need good, fully fleshed out characters with good character development to be invested in the characters, and therefore more invested in the story. The trials are important because the events that occur within the trials affect the story. So most people will determine the best Danganronpa games simply by looking at at those categories. Now I'm not saying that the gameplay, visuals, soundtrack and runtime aren't important because for a game they are all still important factors. If I thought they weren't, then I wouldn't have included them in this video. Some people prioritise the gameplay and visuals of a game over its story and characters. I wanted to share my opinions on all these different aspects, so you lot know my full thoughts about every aspect of each Danganronpa game. So even though that it won fewer categories, I'm saying that it won the most important categories for a visual novel game. Meaning that Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair is the winner, and the best game in the series. Oh, and I know Trigger Happy Havoc didn't win any 
of the categories within this video for me, but we should still give it some love. This was the game that started it all. Without this game, we wouldn't have gotten Danganronpa 2 or V3. I highly recommend that you play all three games in order, and once you have, or if you have already, let me know what your favourite Danganronpa game is in the comments. And if you want to watch another one of my videos, check this one out, where I determined which Bayonetta game is the best in the series. Thanks for watching everyone, see you soon!